You budgeted. You started making more money. You paid off your debts. You ready to buy a house, my friend? Let's check it out. Hello, welcome to Migration to Money, the personal vlog documenting the things I've done and what I'm currently doing trying to build wealth. Consider subscribing, you might learn some things that you can apply to your own life as well. If you've been following along on this How I Bought My First Investment Property series, you know that the first few steps are very rewarding steps, but they are a grind. Getting your spending under control, working your tail off to make some more money, paying off all your old debts, that's tough. Today, we're getting into the fun stuff. It's exciting when you know that you're ready to invest in real estate. All the smart money people do it, now you're almost one of them. But there are a ton of different ways to invest in real estate. After doing a bunch of research, I was drawn to one particular game to get started with. Buy small single family homes using the Burr method. Why single family homes? And what the heck is the Burr method? Well, I chose single family homes to get started with for a few different reasons. One, simply, they're cheaper. Two, I wanted to get my feet wet with the whole logistics of the purchase, the refinance, the rehab, all that stuff with as little risk as possible. And three, I wanted to give myself room to make mistakes. So with the price point being so small, if I had to cover expenses, it wasn't gonna crush me. The Burr Method is a tried and true and trusted trick of the tremendous... What? The Burr Method has been around for a long time and it's one of the most trusted ways to invest in real estate. It stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat that over and over again. The beauty of this method is that once you saved up for your down payment and your rehab cost, that ideally you won't need to make any more money to buy your next place. So you find a property that's below market value, meaning it's gonna need some work. You put work into it, you rehab, you bring it up to value, you put a tenant or a guest in there, guest because you can do short-term rental as well. Then you go to your mortgage holder and you ask them for a cash out refinance and you're trying to just get your money back out. Take all your risk right out of it, right then. And then you take that money and you use it to just buy your next place and you just roll it in and roll it in and roll it in. It's great. I'm sure you have a couple questions. How do you know what the house is going to be worth after you fix it up? Well, I contacted a local realtor, made a relationship there, and she sent me some comps, comparable sales of the area, and also just gave me her opinion on what the house would sell for when it's all fixed up. Um, that, and I also looked into Zillow, and I use Zillow all the time, looking at what was recently sold, not what's currently listed, because those are totally different numbers. How will I know how much the rehab is going to cost? Now that is a little more difficult because I've never done it before. So once I got the inspection of the property I was interested in, I sent that inspection to a local contractor who did remodels and rehabs, and I asked him, just give me an idea of what it would take to get you guys to fix all this stuff up. With those numbers in mind, I adjusted my offer to the seller, who accepted, and I got my first game piece. A good rule of thumb to follow when you're planning to buy a property and fix it up and refinance it is the same rule that a lot of house flippers use, the 70% rule. The 70% rule is you're gonna buy the property for 70% of what it would be worth after repair, minus the amount of money you put into the repair. Are you cross-eyed? <laughs> If you stay close to that rule, it'll really help you get your money back on the cash out refinance. A lot of banks don't get more than 75% of the home value in a cash out refinance. So that was something I didn't know. One little factoid that popped up in this process that they don't really talk about online is that many banks won't even give mortgages for under $50,000. So here I am, I have a purchase agreement to buy the house. I'm searching for a mortgage company that will give me a micro mortgage of around 37, 38,000 and no one wants to waste their time with me. Luckily, the local relationships I made referred me to a couple banks that would do micro mortgages, so it all worked out. If you wanna know what those banks are, comment below and I'll let you know. So where is this local place with homes for under $50,000? Tell you, I've been talking a lot today and I don't wanna rush through this. I'm gonna save this for next week where I'll give you a full breakdown of where I bought and why I bought there. So subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss it. And if you have any questions about what I talked about today, please hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching.